everyone my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am I post videos pertaining to a little bit of whatever I want conspiracy theories controversial people true crime vlogs and all things spooky scary skeleton so if you're into any of that you can subscribe and if not totally chill like no pressure no pressure you don't have to subscribe to enjoy the moment that we're about to have you know i'm doing another conspiracy theory video if you guys saw my last conspiracy theory video i said that it's really hard to find conspiracy theories that don't talk about like politics or a global virus so i found like so so many really cool and interesting conspiracy theories that i feel like are super fun that i'm gonna show to you today let's do some makeup oh my god i literally i look like i just woke up like 30 years ago can we please start but before getting into the rest of today's video i do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video scentbird scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that offers over 600 different fragrances ranging from high-end like gucci and prada all the way to more indie brands like the harmonist and confessions of a rebel fragrance are unisex and work directly with the brand so you know what you're getting is 100 percent authentic and also with each fragrance you also get a 30 day Day supply so you really get your money's worth but you also get to try out the fragrance before committing to a full bottle and if you're really into it you could even commit to two to three bottles a month this month I tried out the Luminate Intensa by Vince Camuto, Just Bloom by Veilmont, Sugarful by Michael Germain and Silhouette by Christian Seriano my personal favorite this month has been Sugarful by Michael Germain because I'm just the type of person that is very much more into like sweet smells rather than floral or musk and also this perfume is made with cotton candy and who in the world gets mad when they smell cotton candy and although this is my favorite all of the fragrances really do smell absolutely amazing and i'm so happy i get to try them before committing to the full bottle and also with semper their products are eight times bigger the average sample size so you know for a fact you are getting your money's worth whilst i was like you know looking into the fragrances that they had on semper I looked up Just Bloom by Veilmont and literally the full size bottle is $300 hundred dollars imagine spending three hundred dollars on a fragrance and then use it for like a week and then find out you don't even like it anymore or like it's just too much for you that would be very embarrassing but don't you worry, you do not have to go through that because if you click the link down below and use my code HaleyE, you will get 55% off your first purchase of Semper plus a free case. As I said, Just Bloom alone cost $300. You are getting this and many other perfumes. It racks up the price and you are only having to pay $7 dollars and 62 cents that is the cost of like a venti iced coffee from starbucks for $300 perfumes. All you have to do is take a simple quiz on their website and based on your preferences, Semperd will suggest some fragrances that you may like and you get to choose the fragrances, so no surprises. Also, you can get the Semperd app, which makes navigating Semperd so much easier. Again, if you use my code HaleyE by clicking the link down below, you will get 55% off your very first Semperd. Again, only $7.62 your very first month, plus, a free case. Once again, thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your video. The very first conspiracy theory that we're going to be talking about is the Mad Gasser of Mattoon. I had never heard of this. Back in the 1940s in Mattoon, Illinois, more than two dozen cases were reported within the span of two weeks of gassings. And it's not like, you know, when you hear the word gassings, you probably think of like a gas leak. Someone spilt nail polish or it's coming from like local factories. No, people report physically being like sprayed with gas by a person. People report the person to be a tall, thin man wearing a dark, tight knit cap and dark clothing. And the man was carrying around a flint gun. Now, if you guys don't know what a flint gun is, and apparently I don't know what it is either because it's actually called flint. I just said it again flit gun kind of like flit gun not flint gun just wanted to clear that up real quick okay 
back to the video is not like an actual gun it's basically like the aerosol spray cans that we have now where it's kind of like a mist they used to have flint guns so this guy would literally just carry around this spray bottle and spray people that would end up giving them really terrible symptoms and the person that would do this would get the name the mad gasser of mattoon a lot of the people that came forward to the police say that they reported smelling strange odors in their home which was soon followed by symptoms such as paralysis of the legs, nausea, vomiting. The very first report of this gas smell was reported in 1944 by a man and his wife. The man woke up in the middle of the night saying that he smelled a really weird odor coming from downstairs and at first he thought that their oven was on so he went downstairs to check to see if the oven was on but when he realized the oven wasn't on he immediately had this like whiff of nausea and just started vomiting uncontrollably and he started to feel very weak as well and due to all of this commotion his wife woke up but she says that she was unable to get out of bed because she was paralyzed the second report was made the very next day by this woman who was just laying in her bed and around 11 p.m she smelled this very odd like sweet smelling odor and she just thought like oh i have my bedroom window open it's probably from my flowers right outside and then a while later she woke up again because the smell started to get extremely strong and when she was going to get up and look outside her window she found herself paralyzed in her legs and unable to get up so her sister was staying with her at the time so she yelled for her sister and when her sister walked into her room she also found herself smelling the smell and found that it came from the bedroom window. So when it came from the bedroom window, they just kind of assumed that it was coming from outside. Around 12.30 a.m. that night, that is when the woman's husband had came home. And when the husband came home, he said that he saw a tall, thin man dressed in all dark clothing and a tight-fitted cap with a flint gun in his hand, and he was spraying the inside of the house from a nearby open window. So the husband tried to chase the man because he thought at first that he was trying to break in. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to catch up with him, but they did call the police afterwards. And this was the very first case that was ever reported where the gas smell had came from a physical person person and not just like a smell in the air. A couple days later, a very similar report was also made. A man was in his house and he smelled the odd smell coming from an open window, but when he looked outside of his window, he saw a man standing underneath the window with a flint gun basically just spraying stuff into his house. So he sees this, he's very scared, so he tries to chase the man but is unable to catch up to him, so he immediately calls the police afterwards. So the police show up and they examine the area. They're trying to figure out if like the guy had maybe tried to break in or something, but they couldn't really find anything. The only thing that they did find though was a white handkerchief laying on the grass. So they're assuming that he probably um, dropped it as he was running away. One of the police officers, when he took a smell of the handkerchief, he says that as soon as he smelt it, he became instantly violently ill. His face started to swell. He became extremely weak. He started to experience paralysis of the legs and he could describe it to be sort of like an electric shock. Like as soon as he smelt the handkerchief, it was like it ran through his body immediately. As I said, there are over two dozen of these cases. So I can't go and into every single case. A lot of conspiracy theorists say that possibly this was put by by, like some authority similar to like the GMO conspiracy theory if you guys are aware of that of like people putting genetically modified ingredients into certain products to make us dumber and easier to control a lot of people follow that conspiracy theory in with this maybe he was a hired person to go into people's houses and spray this gas in order to like mess with their head or something but that has never really been proven thankfully with this incident no one had died 
died and everyone had quite quick recoveries like they would recover from their paralysis or from their sickly feeling within a couple of days the police needed to say something because this was really odd that like just this random man was running around town spraying gas into people's houses and then people become violently ill afterwards so of course the police had to speak up and say something and the mayor of Mattoon actually spoke out and chopped it up to just be mass hysteria since the story had been made to the public they received so so many false alarms a lot of people say that they smelt a gas or saw a person but when they actually showed up on scene there was no trace of a person there and there was no gas odor he was just quite literally gaslighting everyone and said if you saw a man no you didn't they just blamed this like weird odor to be industrial pollution it also may have caused hallucinations hallucination so people may have thought they saw a man but they didn't see a man but this is a real thing that happens there's like real names real people real police reports two dozen people like people that didn't even really live in the same area and I feel like whenever I look up conspiracy theories I always love to ask why big one for me is like when people say that the government is watching us the FBI is watching us through our web cameras why you know like why like why why do they care you really think the government cares they're probably always recording you but i don't think they care enough to watch you you know the government has made it very clear that they don't care about us so if i'm watching umbrella academy for the 14th time why does the fbi need to see that the second conspiracy theory that we're going to be talking about i love these like spooky little conspiracy theories they send a little chill up my spine but it's the max headroom incident. So the Max headroom incident happened on November 22nd of 1987 when two television broadcasts in Chicago, Illinois were hijacked by a person wearing a Max headroom mask as well as a Max headroom costume with like that like swivel panel in the background. So the very first station to be interrupted was WGN News at 9 p.m. during their sports segment. Now now, if you guys aren't from Chicago, uh, WGN is one of the biggest like news stations. My parents have been watching WGN since I was like a little kid. It's where everybody gets their news, meaning that whoever was doing this wanted to get as much attention as possible from it. Randomly during the sports segment at 9 p.m., the screen went black for about 15 seconds. And then after 15 seconds, the man popped up on the screen wearing the mask and the costume with the background. The interruption lasted around 25 seconds and it was basically this guy just shaking around erratically whilst there was like a loud buzzing sound in the background. McMahon and McKinnon, 14 nothing Bears, then the defense, which hadn't put up a sack in 12 quarters, finally did. If you're wondering what's happened, <laughs> so am I. Actually, the computer that we have running our news from time to time took off and went wild. So what we're going to do is start over from the top of the bears. Thankfully, just after 25 seconds, the segment was cut because WGN um, and their tech team had changed their signals and frequencies to get them back on track. And then that is basically how um, the hijackers lost their transmission to the station. Once they were back on track, everyone was really confused. Even like the sports segment host came back on screen and he looked a little startled 
told around 11 p.m. that night that is when the second station would be interrupted by this Max Headroom guy on PBS when they were showing a viewing of Doctor Who. That is when the screen went black for about 15 seconds, but instead of this segment lasting 25 seconds, it actually lasted 90 seconds. This 90 second clip still shared the guy with like the Max Headroom mask and the costume and the background, but this time instead of him just shaking back and forth, he was actually talking to the camera. With the old ones of your tribe, that is the only way to learn. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. I can tell a massive electric shock, he died instantly. Generator? The man was making references to Max Headroom's endorsement to Coca-Cola, like the actual Max Headroom. He started singing the theme song to the TV show Clutch Cargo, and he even made fun of one of the WGN anchors named Chuck Squirt. Sw Hello? Yeah, his name was Chuck Squirt. No, it was Chuck Swirsky. Chuck Swirsky. He continued going on these like really weird rambles and then he also said at one point that he had made a giant masterpiece for the greatest world newspaper nerds. That is in reference to the WGN news because WGN stands for world's greatest newspaper. This segment just went on for a whole 90 seconds. Unfortunately um, at PBS they did not have any engineers on duty at that time so they weren't able to override the signal as quickly as WGN. The PBS station spokesperson at the time, his name was Anders Yocom. He said that the headquarters, while all of this was going on, quote, attempted to take corrective measures but couldn't. The crew at the PBS headquarters also spoke out and said, quote, as the content got weirder, we got increasingly stressed out about our inability to do anything about it. So basically, PBS did not cut off the like transmission between the hijackers and the station. The hijackers just eventually cut out their own signal when their little like segment was done. After this, this was heavily investigated because whoever did this um, may, you know, do it again if they're not stopped. And so the tech teams that were investigating on the case even came forward and said that the hijackers actually had such a strong connection to the station. It was a stronger connection to the station than the station had to themselves, which was extremely hard to do in 1987. Whoever did this definitely had a lot of experience in tech, but unfortunately, after decades of the FCC trying to investigate who had done this, there are some speculations that maybe it was like a former WGN employee that did it because he made a lot of references to WGN and how he didn't like them. There's also some speculation that maybe it was just a random group of like college students that just wanted to play a prank on everyone. At the time, if the people who had done this were to be caught, they would be faced with a 
up to a hundred thousand dollar fine and up to a year in prison but lucky for them in 1992 the five-year statute of limitations was surpassed so basically even now like if the people were to come forward and say hey this was actually us they wouldn't get any criminal punishment for it and even to this day they never have like no one knows who these people were the news stations and every station in general was very on edge like tech teams were always on duty all the time trying to make sure that like nothing like this were to happen again they started to make jokes about it wgn actually at the end of the year when they were showing their like end of the year sports highlights they actually included a snippet of that clip and everybody was like laughing about it in the studio so once they realized it was just like a stupid one-time thing they just kind of laughed about it so that was the second conspiracy theory my third conspiracy theory is personally my favorite one because it's the most wild to me now this kind of goes hand in hand with the hollow earth theory the theory goes that inside of the earth there is no like lava or anything that could harm you but instead a fully functional society in the hollow earth theory like i could literally make a whole entire other conspiracy theory just about that but instead we are just going to be talking about the person that supposedly found it and that was a guy named admiral bird admiral bird was an american naval officer that was sent to antarctica shortly after world war ii to try to figure out what the nazis wanted out of antarctica and so this mission to antarctica was referred to as operation high jump the reason why they chose antarctica specifically is because the government believed that nazi germany actually had a permanent settlement in antarctica called base 221 so that is originally what admiral bird went out to antarctica to try and find but when he got back he was put into isolation for 36 hours examined by tons of investigators and medical professionals afterwards he was told to not tell a single soul what he saw on that trip and then he was given a medal of honor for him doing so so whatever this guy was keeping like he was like it was a huge secret apparently that is where the conspiracy theories come in of what exactly did admiral bird see on his trip it was speculated that the reason why nazi germany kept frequently going to antarctica was not because they had a settlement there called base 221 but it was actually because they were trying to find a place called agartha agartha is believed to be a society that runs inside of the earth it's basically like our surface level earth but flipped inward there are also ancient tribe documents as well where they speak of the people that live underneath so that is why it is believed that when admiral bird went to antarctica he did not find the settlement but indeed found agartha why do people believe that he found agartha specifically shortly after admiral bird died in 1957 his son richard was cleaning up all of his father's things and that is when he came across his father's diary that he took to operation high jump now when he was reading his diary he came across all of these really insane discoveries that his father had made so his son richard took it upon himself and he made a book out of his father's discoveries and that in this book again is where he talks about operation high jump he was a very respectable person he was a naval officer Officer. He had won many, many awards for his contributions in polar exploration and aviation. So this guy like had a lot of credentials. So I just wanted to say that real quick so that when I continue to tell you guys what's going on exactly, you're not looking at me like, Haley, that's insane. You're looking at me like, Haley, oh my God, that makes so much sense. I won't read you all of the diary because all of the diary is quite long. I'll leave everything linked down below or just like go and get the book and read it for yourself because it's actually really really interesting but it would take me forever to sit down here and read the entire diary so I only picked apart the highlights. At this point in the diary uh, Admiral Byrd has reached Antarctica and he's just kind of circling the area and this is what he says. 0, 9, 10 hours. Both magnetic and gyro compasses beginning to gyrate and wobble. We are unable to hold out by instrumentation. 
Take bearing with the sun compass. Yet all seems well, the controls are seemingly slow to respond and have sluggish quality, but there's no indication of ice. He then continues his exploration around this like area specifically. He comes across these weird looking mountains and so he flies over to these mountains and this is what he writes. 055 hours encountering strong turbulence again. We are crossing over the mountain range and still proceeding northward as best as we can. Beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below. There is definitely something wrong and abnormal here. We should be over ice and snow. On the north side, there are gray forests growing on mountain slopes. Our navigation instruments are currently spinning. So about 10 minutes go by. 10.05 hours. I executed a sharp left turn to better examine the valley below. It is green with moss or tight-knit grass. The light seems different here. I cannot see the sun anymore. We made another left turn and we spot what seems to be a large animal like an elephant. No, it's more like a mammoth. This is incredible, yet there it is. We take binoculars to better examine. It is definitely a mammoth-like animal. About 25 minutes go by. 10.30 hours. The external temperature indicator reads 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Continuing on our heading now. Our navigation instruments seem normal now. I'm puzzled over the actions. Attempt to contact base camp. Radio is not working. So we skip ahead a little bit. He's examining these like valleys and these streams and all of a sudden in the distance he sees other aircrafts, but they're not like aircrafts like the ones he's driving in. 1130 hours. Countryside below is more level than normal. Ahead we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. The controls refuse to respond. The aircraft is a disc shape and have a radiant quality to them. They are close enough now to see the markings on them. Is it a type of swastika? Where are we? What is happening? I tug at the control again and they will not respond. We are caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. An English speaking man with a Germanic accent comes through my radio and says, Welcome Admiral Burr to our domain. We should land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax, Admiral, you're in good hands. The aircraft is under some strange control and is now turning itself. This is not some like stupid guy writing this. As I said, he has tons of credentials and education and he's not the type to just like go on a military mission and take shrooms or something. Once Admiral Byrd touches down, he sees in the distance a shimmering city pulsating with bright colors. He exits the aircraft and he's then put on this disc shaped aircraft, but it's not really an aircraft because it has no wheels. He's taken on this aircraft and he zooms straight into the city kind of hovering and very very quickly similar to a roller coaster as he approaches the city closer he finds that the city is made out of this beautiful crystal material from the ship he's taken up to this huge building that he says looks something straight out of a Buck Rogers novel which if you're unfamiliar with Buck Rogers he was basically like a sci-fi novelist back from like the 1920s to 1940s he has taken up to a room and then he sat at a table with what seems to be the president of this society because he seems like you know just the type of person in authority that everyone looks up to so this man sits down with admiral he basically tells admiral that the reason why they didn't kill him when they saw him was because admiral bird means a great deal to the people on the surface world the man continues to tell admiral bird that usually they do not get involved with surface world issues but as soon as as the Hiroshima atomic bomb blew off, that is when they realized that they needed to do something because if we destroy our world, we are also destroying their world. So they tried to visit us on our surface world, but they were met with immediate hostility. People were shooting down their planes, um, which honestly shooting down those planes sounds pretty on par with something we would do. He said that the reason why they attempted to visit us because they wanted to warn us that we are starting to experience 
experiment with things that are much bigger than human, uh, speaking about the atomic bomb. And to basically relay this information onto the surface world in that our surface world is now at a point of no return. He continues to say that there will be no answers in our armies, no safety in our science, but our world will continue to rage on until every flower of our culture is trampled and all human things are leveled in chaos. Basically, he's warning Admiral Byrd saying, if things don't change now, they're just going to get worse, I promise you. And after this meeting, he is sent back on this disc-shaped plane where he is reunited with his own plane and then sent back to Antarctica. Now, after this diary entry, there's really nothing else said. I don't know if Admiral Byrd like went back to visit it again or maybe like turn his plane around and see if he could go there again. So when he got back home, he had a staff meeting at the Pentagon where he was able to display all of his findings to his work colleagues. Since this information was so wild, he had to be examined by multiple medical professionals as well as investigators to deem this as not only truthful, but that he was sane enough to be saying all of this. Shortly after this, he was kept into isolation for 36 hours and then upon his release of isolation, that is when his superiors had told him not to say this to a single person and he was later given a medal of honor in thanks of keeping his secret and then later moving away and eventually passing away, but the secret would later be revealed after his death. I also just found out something that is a little bit scary. Like a couple years after um, Richard, Admiral Byrd's son, released that book, he was found dead in a warehouse. After he had released his father's diary and like had the public know all of his secrets, he literally was found dead in a warehouse a couple years later. It kind of freaks me out and it kind of makes me not want to talk about this. Again, guys, this is just a conspiracy theory. You don't have to believe this. There are so many more explanations. I'm just a stupid little girl on the internet. Like do not take what I take seriously. It just seems so unbelievable. Like when I was reading this, I was like, no, there definitely has to be something that we're not seeing. Like there has to be an explanation for this. Maybe someone forged his like handwriting and made this diary. Maybe his son had added an extra few things to this diary to make it sell more. It's so unbelievable to read and it's so hard to like wrap your head around that this might be true. He was a pioneering American aviator. He was a naval officer. He was a polar explorer and an organizer of polar logistics. So this guy had tons of credentials to be going on a mission like this. And so I don't think he would spend his Operation High Jump, like this is literally his job to just write a sci-fi novel. Of course, when this diary was released, it was deemed as crazy. No one really listened to it. Everybody thought that it was a joke. Everyone kind of thought what I thought of that the son had, you know, maybe put in a few extra things so that the book would sell a lot better. Who knows, maybe this story is a hundred percent real because why else would he be forced to keep quiet given a medal of honor for him keeping quiet and then write all of this in his journal as a joke that one is definitely my favorite one because i think it is the most wild i think it's the craziest just to even really think that this is real all the crazy evidence that is involved with this yet no one like is really taking it seriously or talking about it there are are a lot of people party poopers okay well there is a possibility that maybe you know he had eaten bad food and got food poisoning and then he had hallucinations there was also other people saying that he could have been extremely sleep deprived and dreamt the entire thing that's my favorite one i really love it but let's move on to our fourth and final conspiracy theory ninjins so basically ninjins are known to be a japanese urban legend but some do still believe in it, similar to like Bigfoot or aliens. Like although they are not proven to be real, there has been sightings of them. Ninjins are basically these aquatic human-like creatures with a human body but whale skin. They are completely all white with black eyes and can be as big as 50 feet long. A lot of these ninjins have been seen to be in like different shapes and sizes. 
noises. They are little creatures that swim around in the ocean and sing this specific song and sing sailors to their death, similar to like sirens. The whole sirens urban legend too is also really cool to me, but very similar to aliens or Bigfoot. Although they are never proven to be real, a lot of people have some really weird experiences of coming in contact with them. In 2002, on a forum post on a Japanese website called Two Channel, members of a whale research ship actually witnessed a ninja as it surfaced near their ship off the Antarctic coast. When the group of people first saw it, they just kind of assumed that it was a submarine, but as they appeared closer to it, it began to vanish into the waves. This story of the ninja got even bigger back in 2005 when Google Earth captured what looks to be like a ninja in the Southern Ocean. Now, Google actually came forward about this and was like, that's not a sea monster, you guys. That's definitely just like an iceberg shaped like a human, which again, like, boo, boring. Like, why can't you just have fun and play along? And then throughout the years, there's also been some video footage of like people who have spotted a ninja. About 10 years ago, there was a video that was uploaded to YouTube. There was this scuba diver from Japan who had posted one of their scuba diving trips. And at the end of the video, you can see this huge whale-like creature with big black eyes, and it is believed to be a ninja. was said that the diver, as they were recording this creature, the reason why they got even closer to the creature, although they didn't know what the creature was, is because the creature was singing them a song, and the song felt so hypnotizing that they felt to get closer to it until eventually they snapped out of it and then swam away. There has also been references to ninjins in Viking culture and Indian culture way, way back in the day, and it's really odd for both of these tribes to have references to these when there would be no way that they would ever be in contact with each other. As I said, it's mostly just chopped up to be an urban legend, although similar to aliens or Bigfoot. Although it seems fake, a lot of people have stories of how they have seen them, so I think it's personally interesting. I personally thought it was very, very scary because one of my greatest fears is the ocean. I hate the ocean. Being lost at sea is the scariest thing to me. There's so much of the ocean that we haven't even discovered yet. That means our ocean probably has all of these creepy creatures. Yes, that is all of the conspiracy theories that I have for you guys today. Um, as I said, I'm excited to be doing more of these just because I've been finding a lot more fun ones. You guys have also been DMing me a lot of really cool ones on Instagram. I also just recently found the conspiracy theory um, iceberg. So so I've been like really digging deep on that iceberg. If you guys want to leave any of your own little conspiracy theories, leave that down below. Have you saw a ninja before? Leave that in the comments below. Oh yeah, I also do want to mention that with that video, a lot of people have been saying that it's either edited or a really weird octopus. I just wanted to put that out there real quick because I literally just now remember that. But yeah, if you guys have any of your own little conspiracy theories in the comments below, make sure to type that up. Oh my God, if you have like any spooky stories, put that down there. It's so much fun to just be spooked. Oh my God. And also, I've also realized there's a little snake in the comments pretending to be me saying like, oh my God, text me at this number or something along those lines. And if you see those comments, delete them. Just wanted to say that as well. I'm gonna stop rambling because I'm talking way too much. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to drink some water, go outside if you can, read a good book, do your schoolwork, do your summer reading book. What are you doing here? You should be reading your summer reading book. You should be getting ready. <laughs> you should be doing all of your summer work for the new school year right now. Come on now, get up and do it. 
I'm mostly just saying that for myself. So don't, don't take it personally. Okay, I actually have to go. Bye. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Do something that makes you happy today. Mwah. <laughs>